Welcome to another episode of Holes and Hunts. Johnny581 back. Start off, found this at a Savers for $1.99. I remember when this came out and I just never got around to getting it because I figured it would be kind of stupid. But for buck ninety nine, still sealed in pretty good shape. It's a DVD board game for the WWE. And uh, this looks like it has both Volume 1 and Volume 2 in it. Probably came out in what, 2003 or so. Uh, I'm sorry, I was totally off, 2006. But yeah, I don't know. It might be worth popping in just for a laugh. I don't know if it has old clips or not, if it's just straight up trivia questions. But it says it has both volumes on it for $1.99 for wrestling memorabilia. I wasn't going to turn that down. Looks like it could be fun. I found for uh, $4 at my favorite store, Bull Moose. An old uh, Marvel hardcover original graphic novel, Spider-Man Spirits of the Earth. Hopefully I didn't mention this in the previous video. I'm just playing Super Catch-Up right now, and I saw this still laying around from things I wanted to film. This is back when Marvel had their graphic novels come out on a fairly regular basis, and they were usually more mature-themed. Uh, probably the most famous was the X-Men's God Loves, Man Kills. Most of them were in hardcovers and softcover. I paid $4 for it, and you can see the original U.S. price was $19, so that was pretty cool. I remember these were a lot of money when they came out, especially for a little kid, so I never really got most of these as they came out. I would just look for them at conventions and play catch-up later. This is one that I never had. I do remember, that I think, this when Spider-Man and Mary Jane go on a romantic getaway to Scotland, and the artwork's really nice, so... And there's also, unlike today's books, there's more than four words on a page, more than one panel on a page. So, yeah, this was pretty cool. Then we got, uh, let's see, some PlayStation 1 games. I was in Bull Moose again, different day, and looking through the PS1 games, and somebody had just grabbed an original pressing of Silent Hill 1. And he was staring at it, and it looked like he was going to put it back. I don't know why he just kept staring at it. Then eventually he went to check out, but he missed the Resident Evils. So I got what I believe is all four Resident Evils for the PS1, the Black Label Edition. So first we have, these were $9 each, and the store gives you credit towards all your purchases, so it ends up giving you stuff back. But uh, we got Resident Evil 3 with the Dino Crisis demo. Resident Evil 1. I already had in the long box version. Resident Evil Survivor, which is a first person shooter. I've never actually played this one. Looked interesting though, even though I really don't like first person games too much. And the double disc Resident Evil 2. All of these had the booklets. The discs were very clean, no cracks, no scratches. So that was pretty cool. Just wish I could have got a Silent Hill. Then we got some wrestling videotapes, also from Bull Moose. These were 30 cents each. This was interesting. It's a Road Warriors Tag Team Champs video. I'm not sure who put this out. It says 1990. So this was shortly before they left. At least the video came out shortly before they left for the WWF. But actually, this is produced by AWA. So this must be the footage of... They're in between time before when they were bouncing around for the NWA and the AWA. It says it's only 30 minutes, I think. So I don't know if it's clips or just a couple of matches, but still pretty cool. All things considered, it's in decent shape. And Road Warrior is one of the best tag teams ever. And it's probably be fun to watch, at least for uh, some good old memories. Another wrestling VHS tape for 30 cents with Pioneer. Home release of Extreme Evolution, ECW. Pretty sure I have this already. I wish I could find the DVDs. But everything is in good shape except for the end here. And this just had some of the more epic Extreme matches as they put it on here. But it's a good compilation. The Pioneer tapes were a lot of fun, except they cut almost all the music out, which is a damn shame. But, you know, they had no choice about that. There we go. No Way Out from, uh, is this 2004? Yep, 2004 No Way Out, which made a event with Brock and Eddie. Uh, yeah, this was good stuff at the time. Like, definitely, uh, WWF was still, I'm sorry, WWE still had a lot going for them when, uh, 
this was a SmackDown only pay-per-view, and I think the split pay-per-views helped everybody because then you had double the amount of main eventers, and now it seems like the same four or five main eventers are on both shows every week instead of making new stars, although product has been improving lately. That was a good pickup, 30 cents just for fun. Here's another odd tape. This looks pretty old, I don't know what year, but you can tell by the way the actual, I don't know if it shows up on here, it's the old Ridge VHS tapes. So this is a Bruno San Martino, and it says it has interviews and highlights from the Greatest Sports Legend series. It's another uh, half hour tape hosted by Tom Seaver, alright. And I don't know, I'm not sure if this is like a mini documentary or featurette, but I don't have anything from this series. I'm not sure if he was the only wrestler featured. So what year is this? So 1985. That's pretty cool. Now on to some more video games. Went into one of the local indoor flea markets just to spot check. And I saw this laying there and it said 25 on it. And I opened it up and there were 8 NES games in here. And I really didn't want to spend 25 it wasn't worth it in my eyes. I really didn't care about the case. But then I talked to the guy at the booth, and he's like, oh, yeah, everything's uh, whatever percentage off. And I still didn't want to pay whatever he gave me. And I was putting it back at the other end of his table, and he kind of followed me over there and was like, all right, how about you just give me 15 bucks? So eight games for 15 bucks, not bad. They all had the booklets and sleeves to an extent. Some of the games I have already, like, is a Mario Brothers 3 with the booklet, and I already have a couple copies of this, but it was just in there, so no big deal. Another game I already had was Wall Street Kid, but the booklet was here, and I did not have the booklet, so, and the cartridge is very, very nice. Almost all of these were very nice. Is NES Open, which I never had. Uh, fun Nintendo sports game. I've played it, but I just never got it into it. Another game for the collection. Here's a something I had wanted, just regular Super Mario Brothers single cartridge and it also had the booklet so that was enticing. One day I'd love to get the boxes for all the pixelated covers with the black covers. The game I didn't have was Orb 3D. I don't remember this one. has the booklet. Everything's in good shape. Pinball game uh, by Trade West. This is high speed. Pinball games are almost always fun. And it's had some. Actually, this one did not have the booklet. Had a Trade West warranty card, but unfortunately, I don't see the booklet. Oh well. Game I have not played in a very, very long time. It's one of Jalico's uh, games, City Connection. And this has the booklet, but it looks like a photocopy from the video store, but at least it's something. One thing with the Jalico games that always drove me nuts was that their top labels always just said Jalico. So if they're all stacked up, you actually have to look through them. They usually base is loaded, but every so often you find a different game. And finally, a game I was looking for is Felix the Cat, which I remember being a lot of fun. It's a Hudson game, and almost all the Hudson games are good on the NES. Booklet, everything's really good. So less than $2 a game, a few games I didn't have two duplicates. That was a pretty good deal. Thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.